What is up? It's Jan back at it again with another nerdy bookish video. This is gonna be the Jan you wear book tag. It is that time of year once again, folks. I just want to thank you all for making this a thing for the third year in a row. A few of you have messaged me already that you're working on this video or definitely gonna do this video this year, so thank you. If you're doing this for the first time ever or for the third time in a row or something in between, eternally grateful because I didn't think my little old tag would make it past just me and a couple friends doing it, to be honest. I created this tag in 2021, I believe. It's basically to just like recap the last year. I mean, it's meant to be done in January, but there are people who have done it in March and I don't care. I still watch it. I still comment. I still get a burst of serotonin when I see a notification of me getting tagged. I don't care when you do this, but it's just called the January book tag because obviously my name is Jan. So there are 10 questions in this tag. There are some that only ask for like three books, but of course I'm gonna break the rules because it's my tag. I can do what I want and y'all can too. I'll have the questions in the description below if you do decide to do this tag. Hopefully this is up by January. January 2nd. It is currently the first as I'm filming this, so happy freaking new year to everybody. I am manifesting a great reading year for all of us, and I hope 2024 brings you everything you want and more, and it treats you better than 2023 if anything in 2023 hurt you <laughs> in any way. Okay, let's just move on. Okay, number one is what was the last and first, if you remember, book that you read last year? The first book I read last year was The Depths by Nicole L'Esperance. I got it from the library so I don't have the physical book with me, but I believe I gave this a three star, an average start to the month, but I think it was also a carryover from like the last week of December, 2022. So I was just finishing a current read. This was a YA book about this creepy island and this girl who I think could interact with ghosts. I'm just trying to recall from memory. I don't feel like pulling it up. I believe this came out in 2022. It was okay. Plot could have been better in several ways. And I think there were a couple things that felt like they were missing. Like a couple plot holes, you know, but other than that, it was an enjoyable, quick read, and I'm glad I got it from the library as opposed to purchasing it because it was only three stars. I also ended the year with a three star, but take my rating with the biggest grain of salt ever, or just honestly don't take it at all because I didn't give this book a fair shot since I was just trying to squeeze it in before the end of the year, and I literally binged it on audio in one sitting, and then I followed along for like half of it. But book is, I'm trying to hide my ugly nails because I lost a couple of them, so that's why I'm holding it like a freaking heat. Then. Oh, I still have this one. Okay, let's do that. This is How You Lose the Time War by Amal El Motar. This is a book in epistolary format, so in letters between these two women who are on opposing sides. Post singularity technotopia. Don't ask me what that means. I don't know either. I still have to do my Googling. Basically, they're at war with each other and there's some, I guess, time travel, but it was hard to comprehend and I knew that going in. I knew that I was gonna be confused, but alas, I chose to read it audibly for the most part regardless, but I did still give it a three because the writing is gorgeous. That's why I'm saying I didn't give it a fair shot because I bought this from Pango with the full intent on annotating it because I heard the writing is just poetic and just that type of prose that I love. So I will be rereading this in the future and annotating it and seeing if my rating goes up because I'm sure it will at least one star. Number two, what is your first read this year? I'm not sure what book I'm gonna finish first. Ideally, it would be one of these because I wanna start my my year off with a BIPOC author. I do have my first of the month sprints in a couple hours here, so that's when I'm gonna start these. Natural Beauty by Ling Ling Huang. This is on my 24 for 2024. I will be knocking this out right away in January and it's gonna feel great, but this is like one of those weird horror books. Literary horror, I believe, maybe? I don't know, but it's commentary on, I think, beauty standards and like staying youthful. I think it's the same themes as like Rouge by Mona Awad, if you've read that, which I haven't yet. <laughs> There's like body horror in this, this woman's body is changing in like drastic ways like the one example I heard was her eyelashes rapidly start growing and like she can hear it so I'm excited to review this and see what I think because it's short I heard it goes by fast but I heard it's really weird and y'all know I love weird books and I also want to start blackouts by Justin Torres today just look at this cover it's gorgeous I just wish Amazon got their shit together and didn't damage it but I don't even know what the genre is is this like historical fiction it says a book about storytelling, its legacies, dangers, delights, and potential
potential for change and a bold exploration of form, art, and love. Blackouts uses fiction to see through the inventions of history and narrative. A marvel of creative imagination, it draws on testimony, photographs, illustrations, and a range of influences as it insists that we look long and steadily at what we have inherited and what we have made. A world full of ghastly shadows and flashing moments of truth. So that's just a little blurb from the synopsis, but you can see it's mixed media. It looks like it's told in vignettes almost. I'm excited to see what this is about because I know this was one of the Goodreads Best Books nominees. I heard a couple people say this was one of their best books of the year as well. So excited for that and hopefully that goes by quickly as well. Question number three, share three of your reading goals this year. I'm going to complete my 24 and 2024 and my 12 Rex by 12 friends this year because I failed last year, but I was so close, especially with the 12 Rex one. I'm gonna do my one nonfiction a month again because that helped me learn a lot and it was nice to say that I fairly regularly consume nonfiction as well as fiction. I guess I'll share four. I wanna read one book of the month book a month because I have over 50 unread book of the month books and I've been a subscriber for like three or four years now. I need to cut it down. <laughs> and since these are all books that I paid for with my money, they're all like free reign in terms of unhauling. So it would be nice if I could like whittle them down to the ones I actually wanna keep. I'm looking at them right now. I have a whole shelf of them. But yeah, 50 plus of those are unread. So I wanna read at least one every month, but I know I'm gonna read more than that because the little book of the month challenge thing requires 15 at least, so. And then I also wanna read one arc a month. Not only is my NetGalley score total ass, but like I get so behind on my arc, whether it's digital or physical, I get so excited when I get approved for these arcs or get sent these arcs from publishers and then I just don't touch them. So that should be doable because I have a couple physical arcs that I got sent on my 24 for 2024. So that should help that goal. Those were four of my reading goals, more of the simple, less personal ones. The next question is share three of your most anticipated titles. Again, in my 24 and 2024, I have a bunch of new releases on there as well as backlist books, but some of those new releases, they're not out yet. I haven't managed to get my hands on yet. So I'm not gonna mention those specific ones. If you wanna know more of my anticipated releases, I'll link my 24 and 2024 down below. But some of the ones that I haven't mentioned are Riley Sager's new book, Middle of the Night, I believe comes out, I'm gonna assume June or July because that's been his pattern past couple years. June 18th is when that one comes out. I don't even care what it's about. Riley Sager is an auto buy author for me. I have unhauled some of his books before. I don't even own the only one left even though I gave it a really high rating, but I just love reading his book. And then we have The Spell Shop by Sarah Beth Durst, which comes out July 9th. And this is a cottage core cozy fantasy. The main character is a librarian. You know, she meets a guy, there are spell books and witchy things involved. Says, of course, perfect for fans of Travis Baldry and TJ Klune. And I love the cover. It's just so magical, whimsical. And I think Amazon has, not to promote Amazon, but I saw it on there at first. They have purple sprayed edges, I believe, on the first editions. I don't know if it's all editions. Again, I'm gonna share more than three. Immortal Pleasures by V. Castro. This is an ancient Aztec vampire story. This vampire roams the modern world in search of vengeance and love in the seductive dark fantasy. V. Castro, I got an arc of the haunting of Alejandra, but I am not gonna read that book because I know it has a bunch of my most hated things in books and I think there's like a graphic birth scene. Yeah, I don't wanna read that, but I do wanna read Goddess of Filth. I'm actually gonna read Goddess of Filth this month. So I'm excited to dive into V. Castro's writing. This cover is everything. My Darling Dreadful Thing. There's something about spirits and this girl who believes in spirits, but no one would believe her or something like that. Where Sleeping Girls Lie by the author of Ace of Spades. I don't even know what this one's about, but I know it's a YA thriller and I loved Ace of Spades. And then The Heiress by Rachel Hawkins, who's the author of The Villa, which was one of my runner-up top 10 books of 2023. I believe it's just like rich people problems for this one. Rachel Hawkins is hit or miss for me, but The Villa was great. I had such a good time. I know a lot of people hate that one, but The Heiress doesn't look like something I would pick up otherwise, just based on the cover and the synopsis, but I wanna give Rachel Hawkins another shot. So it's rich people problems. There's a famous kidnapping, someone who dies, adoption. I'm sure there's an inheritance at some point, which I'm not a fan of. Yeah, an inheritance can entail far more than what's written in the will and that the bonds of family stretch far beyond the grave, whatever that means. Again, check out my 24 for 2024 if you wanna know more because I talked about a lot of great books that are coming out this year in that video. Next question, which goals did you reach and not reach last year? We've definitely had some failures. Like I said, I failed on my 12 recs and 23 for 2023. I had eight left, I think, between six and eight on my 23. From my 12, I had two left and I started both of them. It was Wolf Song and Cider Mill Coven. I just couldn't 
couldn't get myself to rush through either of those. Wolf Song I was way more interested in, but it's a big boy. So I was like, there's no way I'm gonna squeeze this in, but I will be continuing those. Yeah, we're starting with the bad news first. And then I didn't read all of V.E. Schwab's backlist, which is more like an ongoing goal. I'm not too mad about that. Out of my official goals that are written in my journal, that's pretty much it. There were also like series I wanted to start that I never got around to, like the Raven Cycle series, and I wanted to get further into Throne of Glass, but I only read the Assassin's Blade, things like that. So just the popular series that everyone but me has read, The Hunger Games too. That's happening this year at some point, she said hopefully. The goals that I did reach were a lot more, so happy about that. But just really quickly, I did read my 151 books. I actually read 317 this year, which is the most I've ever read. Oh, one goal before I forget that I didn't write down in here was to DNF more. I DNF'd more than 30 books this year. I don't remember the exact number, but between 30 and 40 books. So that was wild. I was actually gonna make a video of books I DNF'd in 2023, but I just didn't have time. So if you wanna see that, I'll still leave it on my radar, but I can't promise you that it's gonna come out in January. <laughs> I read five classics total throughout the year, one nonfiction a month, my one book on Kindle per month. I launched my merch. I hit 100 patrons. Thank you so much for that, by the way. Like that is astounding to me. I hit that goal like pretty early in the year. So that was wild. I I did launch my newsletter. I did it for like, I think it's nine or 10 months. And then I lost all the data for like the mailing list and stuff because Google Drive glitched on me and it was probably also user error, but I've moved past it. Now the newsletter is Patreon only just because keeping track of the numbers and everything gave me anxiety in terms of like the mailing list. And on that Google form that I lost, I had how many participated in Full Moon Book Club at any point in life. Losing that just made my heart shatter, <laughs> not to be dramatic or anything. And I did continue my hashtag sad book hour series, but I kind of cheated a little bit because I read House of Earth and Blood for books that made Sid from Sid Bookworm cry. That was the only one I read and I also combined it with another vlog. So it wasn't like a dedicated vlog, but I'm still counting it as continued. I did round two of Full Moon Readathon, which will be happening for round three this year. I guess I'm just gonna do it in August again since that's the tradition now. It happened twice, so it's tradition in this household. And I hit 6k on YouTube. So that was fun. Oh, also buzzwordathon. I did accomplish every single month. I was two days late for one of the months. And then one of the months I tried to participate and I DNF like three or four books with the word other in it. I just couldn't find one that grasped my attention, but I'm still counting that as a win. Pretty successful year in terms of those. I'm not mad about it. I can't complain. It's fine. The next question is, are there new releases this year you've heard of that you have no desire to read? Yeah, I'm sure I've scrolled past a bunch of them that I just didn't care for, but the ones I saw right before this video when I did another quick scroll, Ruth Ware's new book, something about like the only perfect couple or something. It's an and then there were none retelling. Those are getting so overdone. I'm just, I don't really care. It wasn't one by one and then there were none retelling. Not interested. I have enough Ruth Ware books from her backlist that I still have to get to, so not excited about that. The second Emily Wilde book, couldn't care less. The first one was such a disappointment for me. It actually made it on my most disappointing of the year. So that'll be up after this one so stay tuned for that. Another one is the next TJ Klune which is apparently I don't know if it's a companion or a sequel to House of the Cerulean Sea but that was also a disappointing book for me because audibly hated it. I can't get over the narrator's voice that they used for Chauncey. I can't get past it but Wolf Song is by TJ Klune and I'm loving that book. Like that book is probably gonna be five stars for me. I'll be surprised if it's not. So it's not TJ Klune the author it's House of the Cerulean Sea and also not interested in their other books like in the lives of puppets, couldn't care. The next Wayward Children book by Shauna McGuire, not interested. And then there are a bunch of like big authors actually coming out with books this year, like Nora Roberts, David Baldacci, I saw JD Robb, all those authors, you know, those airport, <laughs> airport authors. Next question, what are some reading habits you wanna change this year, if any? I want to be more intentional in terms of reading BIPOC authors, reading diversely. That's not me saying that I wasn't intentional in previous years, but like I was intentional about it last Last year and I was mad at myself for not, you know, hitting double digits every month for BIPOC authors. When I read like 20 plus books a month, like less than half of that is BIPOC authors. So I want to be more intentional and hope to up those numbers. Also in books that I buy, I want to be more intentional, not just like spending wise, but also buying more diverse books as well. At least like buying them from Barnes and Noble or Amazon, like at least make it a BIPOC author and then save, you know, the white authors for like Pango or half price books, just like buying them used if that makes sense. Oh, re 
reading chunkier books and not being intimidated by them. I mean, last year I conquered House of Earth and Blood and Babel. I'm almost done with Wolf Song, so I can do it. I just need to be more patient. I mean, I'm gonna try to tackle A Day of Fall and Night this year. That's on my 24th for 2024. Your reading habits and goals kind of interlock, but I guess my habits are more like ongoing as opposed to like a set number. Yeah, okay, I'm just gonna move on. I am losing track of what I'm saying. Number eight, are there any adaptations you're excited about? I don't know. I can't keep up with the dates anymore. Like I hear the announcements and everything, but I never know when they're actually set to come out. But I heard The Silent Patient is being adapted. So that's exciting. Joey's excited for that one too. When is Addie LaRue coming out? I have no idea. There are adaptations that came out already that I haven't seen yet, like Lessons in Chemistry. Leave the World Behind I'm interested in for some reason, but I haven't read the book yet. I still have to watch Heartstopper. Oh, All the Light We Cannot See I also want to watch, but I haven't read the book yet. That's a thing. Like I keep hearing announcements and I never know. And then they keep getting pushed back to number nine, favorite bookish memory of last year. My answer for this is always whenever I spend time with booktube friends, like whenever I meet them in real life. In 2023, I met Sahar from basically Bookish Reads. I don't know if she changed her YouTube channel name. I know she changed her Instagram handle to Literary Sahar. I think. I also met Jordan from Sorry Book Solid. I hung out with Sid from Sid Bookworm. We went to a V.E. Schwab event, which was super fun. I met a patron. I met Ashlyn, my fellow vamp, my long-term subscriber. That was so fun. And I met her dog, Scout, as well. Oh, oh my God. I got recognized in public by a subscriber named Kat. And I will talk about this for the rest of my fucking life. I think I mentioned this in my most disappointing books too because the stolen air was there and we were buying the stolen air <laughs> that day. But that was a highlight of my life. <laughs> but other than that, Christina and I have been talking every single day. Christina from Christina's Chapters. We've been friends for over three years now and it was usually on and off, but then one day we were like, let's start our good morning video messages again. And then we never stopped. We both admitted to each other that we thought it was gonna last like two weeks. And then to this day, every single morning, we say, it's usually her saying good morning because she gets up early way more consistently than I do <laughs> nowadays, especially. But yeah, we talk every day. We just did a 24 hour readathon where we actually stayed up past like two am so that was really fun and then like bookish moments with joey when we would discover new bookstores or have coffee shop reading dates i love having a bookish boyfriend y'all like highly recommend my life is books i mean my full-time job is at a library so it's literally like every fucking moment is a bookish moment in my life all right last question any carryovers from last year that you still plan on finishing yeah of course i have 10 books that are still in my current reads section i guess i don't have to grab the books i guess i just pull up goodreads like i said wolf song cider mill coven i have a curious beginning by diana rayborn i'm not gonna put up pictures for this y'all have heard about like five of these books for months because i can't get myself to pick them back up but i'm not gonna dnf because i know i'm gonna like them most of them clockwork angel hollow heathens which is a witchy romanticy sorcery of thorns i've been reading for months but it's a reread so that's why i haven't gotten myself to finish it because i know it's a reread and i'm like i know what happens you know i know i gave it four stars because i read it in college and I had like so much going on and I wasn't like a huge fantasy girly back then but now I think it's gonna be five stars because I constantly think about this book and it was a Lair Buddy read at one point too and I still didn't finish it. I made an annotating video for Patreon, still didn't finish it but I also have The Scarlet Alchemist by Kylie Lee Baker which I wanted to read before October because I got an arc for it from one of my subscribers. She sent it to me. I have yet to finish it for some reason. I think part of me is just like subconsciously scared that I won't like it as much as The Keeper of Night but I've heard only good things so I don't know what I'm chickening out about. But Starling House was my Lair Buddy read for December and I am like 130 pages into it. Love Boat Forever is the third book in the Love Boat Taipei series by Abigail Hing Wen. Love this YA series. It's one of those rare contemporary YAs that I love. And then lastly, I have Mourned by Men by Katie Friendries, which is a local author. And my coworker actually bought me this book because she's friends with her and she bought it for me. She asked me to review it and I was like, gladly, because it's a Greek mythology retelling 
and I want that's another one of my goals <laughs> is to hopefully be a Greek mythology girly eventually and Mourn by Men is super short so hopefully that'll be like the start of it all but okay that is everything if you want to do this tag I tag you but specifically Katie from Katie Coulson Christina from Christina's Chapters here's some content for you you're welcome Sid from Sid Bookworm Noel from Noel Seven Pages Brie from Brie Cherie Reads question mark if you have time no pressure that is all again if you want to do the tag feel free pretend I tagged you don't worry about it thank you so so much for watching hope you had a vampy day don't forget to do some self-care and i'll see you on my next video Bye.